The mural entitled Student Ascending Staircase is composed of circles, rectangles, and triangles, geometric shapes that, are, that form the foundation of design principles, along with the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. A large brush stroke moves toward, upwards to, through the composition, charting a, the path of a student navigating their way through the course of their post-secondary career. Alternative pathways meander in and around the main trajectory, alluding to different choices and interests a student may have in their education. The brush stroke is a reference to the tactile and material qualities of art making, while the cloud-like formations allude to the more ephemeral qualities and intangible concepts involved in creative production. It was our pleasure to work alongside two AU art students in the creation of this mural. Uh, we had Waleska join us in the first few days and uh, she's a first year student. And then we had Morgan join us near the end who just graduated. So congratulations, Morgan. Um, they, they helped us do the actual painting of the mural and in turn, we were able to share some conversations about art um, the experience of art school and the mural painting process with them. With that, we're going to jump into some of our own experiences uh, when we were at art school. Um, I was a student from 2002 to 2006 um, when I experimented a lot with assemblage, sculpture, painting, printmaking, installations and I dabbled in my first mural experiments in the graffiti stairwell. Um, I majored in print media studies, uh, which really allowed for a crossover of different mediums that I was interested in. Printmaking involves photography, drawing, sculpture, and installation, and I dabbled in a lot of those things during my time there while learning basic concepts and skills of printmaking. I was able to organize several group exhibitions with my student colleagues, and I, organ and I held a, a number of exhibitions of my own work in some of the student galleries. Uh, this slide is um, from the installation Don't Look Down um, in one of the Mary Nickel Plus 15 gallery spaces that were in the Arts Commons. Um, it was a it was a collaboration with artist Dallin Ersenbach. Uh, we drilled a hole in the, in the wall of the window to facilitate a foot pedal, you can see at the bottom, where viewers could activate lights, a radio, and fans that were inside of the installation. Uh, this was my grad piece um, installed in the Illingworth Kerr Gallery, Wheel in the Sky. It was a large installation of sculptures, paintings, printmaking plates, and found objects that were telling the story of the human spirit. Um, at the same time, I was involved in a, with a collective of student peers from, from art school making collaborative art. Um, the collective was called Tender Mountain Clan. We had an intentional focus on making artwork outside of the school framework where we directly installed these pieces in public, bypassing the gallery format and treating the city as its own gallery space. Uh, the TMC group exhibition was held in 2007 at the 809 gallery, garage gallery space in Sunnyside. Um, it included documentation of a lot of the street art that was collaged into the space. Here you can see some of the photos collaged to look like a volcano erupting. And um, the installation included a lot of remnants of the processes of collaboration. Uh, 809, this was one of the first shows at the 809 gallery, and they the collective there continued with experimental programming as an accessible space for emerging artists to show their work up until 2013. This next slide entitled Neon Wilderness was a collaboration with Eric Olson at the mechanic shop turned art venue space 
ideal gallery. We were able to intervene in the architecture of the space, uh, painting on the floors, ceilings, and walls. Um, it really highlights the importance of these types of alternative art spaces to foster creative projects and arts communities that are not always bound to grant funding, bureaucracy, and programming limitations. It takes an active role. It, it takes a lot of work and participation for an art community to be thriving in a city. And it's a lot of challenging work. It's often hard to sustain these types of spaces. Many have been evicted and torn down throughout the years, but I think it's very much worth it. So I went to, I did my BFA in Victoria at UVic. Um, so I was a part of many music and arts communities when I lived there. Um, in my first two years, I was doing a lot of drawing, um, sculpture, assemblage, digital media, and sound art. At the same time as I was starting out my school, I began volunteering at the community campus radio station, which is CFUV. Um, I was a programmer there for the five years that I lived in Victoria, um, volunteering, doing a number of shows that dealt with sound art and experimental music. Um, I also became employed there as their graphics manager, which gave me a lot of opportunities to experiment with, with graphic design, um, as well as put out a quarterly publication um, on the local music and arts culture. Working and volunteering at CFUV gave me so many opportunities to develop my design skills and I met so many people in the music and art scene that facilitated my involvement in, in those scenes while being in school. In my third and fourth year, I was mainly doing self-directed studies uh, with a number of teacher mentors that I worked close with. Uh, the, the, these self-directed classes culminated my grad piece titled Vulture Eyes, which was a full room, full room immersive installation, which included assemblage sculptures, found objects, video projections, sound pieces, and tactile elements. Viewers in the space were meant to navigate the installation and discover their own meaning and connections to the work. Um, this was around the time that Mikhail and I actually met in Victoria and he was able to see my grad piece which sparked a lot of conversation about some of the similarities we shared in art making and decision making and uh, it was kind of the beginning of our collaboration. Yeah just to wrap up our time at art school um, we really feel like you know it's important to make your time at art school work for you. Use the school resources and galleries to the fullest potential. Try to foster your own artistic communities, support networks, peer critiques, group shows, etc. And try to rely on your peers for inspiration and encouragement. Treat it as a choose your own adventure type scenario. So our t we both lived in Victoria from 2009 to 2015, yet we only met each other at the end of that time period. Recently after graduating, Rachel had applied for and been accepted to create an installation at the 5050 Arts Collective gallery space, and we decided to collaborate on the show together. We wanted to respond to a recent event in Victoria where this barge of flattened automobiles tipped into the harbor and spilled a bunch of car parts. We spent a month collecting found objects, um, soundscapes, video clips, and kind of exploring the area around the gallery, which was called Rock Bay. We spent um, we spent a week later 
arranging all of this stuff we'd brought in from up from the outside into this installation. The installation was called Processing Rock Bay, and it consisted of car parts, plastic colored bits, salvaged wood pallets, collected garbage, and a number of donated monitors and speakers where we screened footage of insects, birds, and people working in the area, along with edited sound clips of industrial noise and traffic. Working together, we realized that many of our aesthetic decision making and inclinations really, really lined up together. On the left, you can see uh, that was an exterior shot of our installation in the gallery. We had blocked out the window by by a bunch of pallets and we had a, a screening that people could see uh, from the front. And then on the right is just an image to show um, it was kind of cool for us. We were invited in 2018 to paint uh, a mural on the front of the on the front of the gallery. So it was cool to return to the place where we had our first um, art making experience together. In 2016, we decided to move back to Calgary to be closer to family and um, we moved into Mikhail, my dad's garage actually, and we were both working jobs at the time and trying to make artwork in our spare time. Uh, we began the Nasarimba collaboration and the word is a fictional word that we, we made up. However, it's derived from a Romanian word meaning whimsical mischief, Nazuri. We get our process flowing at that time by revisiting the, the practice of creating small sculptures out of recycled and found wood with the intention of installing them around the city. So it was it was kind of a re revitalization of the Tender Mountain Clan project that uh, Mikhail and his peers had started uh, when when they were in school um, and we were trying to work with recycled materials, just kind of whatever we could find. Um, we weren't spending a lot of money to make make our art and just kind of making do with the time that we had. Um, we really tried to make sure we documented everything well, and we we tried to hold sh uh, art shows wherever wherever we could um, to kind of show our work before installing them publicly. We just wanted to celebrate with our friends and and it's a great time to to invite musicians to have have a little party and and foster those connections. So there the previous slide was from Lux Laundromat in Calgary and then we also um, took a trip to Victoria um, and installed these pieces in the Ministry of Casual Living window gallery space. We tried to kind of do our own little residencies wherever wherever we would travel. Um, the two pictures on the outside uh, were from a time we spent in Montreal where we we worked with this collective called Poisson Noir and they they let us use their space to to make these sculptures which were made out of wood that we salvaged um, when we when we got to Montreal. And then we were able to spend time installing these pieces there. Around the city. The center slide is from Interior BC. Um, so when we were in Calgary, we, we became members of the Burnt Toast Studio, a shared printmaking studio space that allowed us access to screen printing equipment, a wood shop, and a community of artists. We began to translate our working methods to other mediums using the studio facilities to make paintings, prints, and sculptures. Um, Burnto Studio has just been an awesome place to be connected with throughout our time here. We're still currently members there. Um, just just the ability to to use these shared spaces. It's often not realistic to have your own printmaking set up, your own wood shop. So, so having this shared space was super beneficial for us. And 
the people we've met there um, have just really been a, a great community of people to know. They hold uh, poster shows often uh, throughout the city, whether it's with Sled Island or different fundraisers. Um, so, so that's been just a really fun, fun thing. Connection. Yeah. So in uh, 2017, we painted our first mural together in Golden, BC, using cheap mist tint house paints and spray paint. That picture is the top left picture. Um, we asked for permission from a store owner and they gave it to us. Um, we had no real plan other than to collaborate together on a mural. Um, this first project we didn't really expect to be compensated for this um, because we knew we needed some practice painting together under our belt and we managed to produce a mural we were happy with and in turn we were able to use the documentation to apply for future opportunities. It was really beneficial and and like these opportunities we can't thank the people who gave up these walls enough you know like they didn't ask to see a finished design or anything before we started they just kind of trusted our process and and that allowed for some experimental work to happen and and just for us to kind of figure out how how the whole process worked and how we can work together we began to reach out and network with other groups that were organizing um, mural projects and festivals in other cities, um, along with lining up a few more walls for us to paint locally. Um, some of these pictures are from the Wall to Wall Mural Festival in Winnipeg, um, where they brought us out and were very supportive and uh, in letting us realize our vision. Um, Another picture is from the Rust Magic Festival in Edmonton. <clears throat> These <clears throat> types of projects are really great in meeting new people and building community in those cities. Uh, after doing those few murals, um, we, we spent four months traveling in Mexico um so while we were there we kind of just painted where wherever people would let us um it was it was cool to see a different a different place and how how street art kind of works there and it really opened our eyes to to these parallel worlds that exist but differently different than how how street art and murals are happening here in canada uh, we were able to work with with a number of artists, um, Mexican artists, and learn from them. And um, it was it was a really great opportunity to get some experience. Uh, a culmination of our activities in Mexico led to um, an exhibition we held in Mexico City entitled Light Source. the The show, the work in the show was created by um, at a friend's studio space where we spent two weeks um, in an informal residency creating some sculptures and framing these works. We were able to get a CADA grant to help with some of the framing of the work and it was we were lucky also they they allowed us to paint the the exterior of the of the gallery so we we had some freedom there to create a mural that went along with our exhibition uh, there in Mexico City. So the following year after returning back from Mexico and um, really hunkering down on on some on what we wanted to do in the future, we, we created a series of murals in three different cities in 2018. Um, called the Primary Series. Um, we were able to paint murals in it, in the Bump uh, Beltline Urban Mural Project um, in Calgary, the top left. The second slide on the top right is from the Rust Magic Festival in Edmonton. 
And the third mural in that series was painted on the Rockslide Studio and Gallery in Victoria, BC. So painting at, at a number of festivals, um, we're, we're, we're just able to meet so many different artists and, and there's always great connections and banter about the ins and outs of mural painting. And one artist we met when we were in Winnipeg is Edmonton artist Jill Stanton. And we had a lot uh, to chat with her about and we decided we wanted to collaborate. So on the left is is an image of the first collaboration we did. That's a building right next to the music, National Music Center in the East Village. Um, so this wall, we kind of just got permission. Um, we didn't we didn't ask for payment at that time. Um, we just kind of wanted to experiment uh, this this type of artwork, creating creating an architectural kind of impossible space and um, responding to the environment that the wall is located. And um, so using using the example of the first mural we were able to complete together, we applied to Bump Mural Festival here in Calgary to paint uh, in 2020. And we were awarded a wall, um, I guess two walls, kind of a wraparound piece on the Bottle Depot um, downtown Calgary. So So Jill came down from Edmonton and uh, stayed with us for a week and we collaborated on this uh, large scale mural. Um, we were really, um, it was quite a lively painting experience. We got to really see some different sides of Calgary that we're not normally like a part of and it it kind of it fostered a lot of conversations um, about that area, gentrification, and just the ways that different communities are treated in our city. We look forward to working with Jill again more in the future. So we want to talk a little bit about um, just the alliances and connection that we've made with other artists, collectives, organizations uh, that have all been just really critical to sustaining our art practice. Being that it's quite multidisciplinary has allowed us to, to stay engaged in what we're doing and, and we still manage to enjoy almost every aspect of what we do because it's, it's ever changing. Yeah, we're often able to share tasks in our collaboration um, that make it a bit easier to to manage um, a lot of the applications and writing and all of that type of thing. It's it's nice to have other people to bounce ideas off of and that can happen. You know, you don't have to be directly collaborating with someone, but you can access your peer group and and other people you you um, are connected with in order to review your writing and and bounce ideas off of. So these are some examples of some posters we've done over the years that we printed at the Burnto Studio. One was for Grow Calgary, a uh, urban farm that provides food, uh, local organic food. Um, here's another poster in the middle that was part of a poster show at Burnt Toast. Um, just speaking to current austerity in, in Alberta. So participating in these fundraisers, volunteer projects, um, festivals and residen residencies are ways to meet new people, uh, get, our, get your work out into the public and generate new opportunities. This, this, the photo on the right was uh, about a fundraiser that we were a part of in, in support to get a new van for the Alpha House uh, and the dope team. So we, we kind of auctioned off um, a mural where the proceeds went directly to, to getting uh, this new van. Um, and 
participating in festivals have have really given us new insights into different arts communities and we've been able to meet new people that way. Um, these pictures are from the Okotoks festival called Nooks and Crannies from the um, past two years. Um, they have created this festival that activates forgotten, overlooked and underused spaces in the historic downtown part of Okotoks. Uh, it, with a real focus on using recycled materials, they have a partnership with the reuse center there. Uh, and that work is installed publicly for a month in the summertime. Another thing that's been uh, really helpful for us is participating in residencies. Just the opportunity to get out of the studio, out of your personal studio and and have a dedicated time to work on new ideas, new projects is so beneficial um, when you're when you're working on your thing. Outside of school, yeah, it's hard to make that dedicated time sometimes. So um, this is this. These slides are from a residency we did in um, Duncan, BC. It's called the U Utelier. And they have a gallery space in this old boathouse and they they run a residency uh, down below. So we were able to produce um, a body of work as well as paint a mural there, which is kind of cool for us because all the it's it's located right outside the the residency quarters. So the future artists who come and do their residencies will will spend time with our mural and uh, It'll be a permanent piece there. Um, we wanted to end off with talking about the Rec City residency we were a part of in 2018. Um, this the Rec City Collective was a, a collective of curators that came out of the the 809 gallery we previously mentioned. Um, they they got together to curate art in pre-demolition spaces um, and they've done a number of projects throughout the years. This was one of our favorite projects we've ever worked on. It was a international kind of a group gallery uh, residency and so there was a number of artists working together in in a very in a few different spaces. Um, artists from across Canada, uh, the states. And so we there there were various events that were held out to the public, uh, which created such a sense of community while we were we were working on these installations. And because it was it was a residency and th these spaces are pre demo, there was so much time and space for experimentation and and that's that's just so helps you grow so much as an artist when when some of those restrictions are lifted and you don't have to necessarily plan everything you're going to do before you actually do it. So the top left slide is from our installation in the office city space. So we went into this office space in the downtown core that was vacant and we disassembled all of the furniture, the desks, and we cut them up and created an installation with that material. Um, there were a few other artists in the space as well and the work all really spoke to one another and there was music performances held there. Um, below is a collage party that was held in the space um, that we facilitated. And then the other portion of the residency, we spent painting the the houses that where the artists were staying in Marta Loop um, and we painted the entire exterior of two houses along with the garage and the driveway 
which had a little basketball court. Um, and the sculpture on top as well. And there's an so I guess we just want to end with saying with with this slide, just demonstrating the community that that was fostered through Rec City. We're still in touch with uh, many of the artists we met through there and um, hope to collaborate and, and keep working with them. And that's a, a type of project that really came out of communities that were formed at um, AU Arts. Um, and it goes to really show that um, to sustain your art practice, it takes more than just you, you don't operate in a bubble, right? Um, it, to have a strong art practice yourself, it also is necessary to have a strong community in which you're a part of. So we really just encourage that type of thinking for you at your school in your school career. Um, I think we ended a bit early, but we'd love to have some some questions. We we want to encourage you to reach out to us on Instagram and please like if you have any questions or you want to chat about anything, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we're, we, we just obviously love these connections uh, with different artists, um, especially as as you're exiting uh, school, it can be a, a tough time to kind of navigate what what you're moving on to to do. So, you know, we'd love to we'd love to chat about that. So uh, I think we're gonna go back to uh, Marion now, who's gonna facilitate a Q and A. Okay, great. We have quite a few questions here. So um, the first one is. As an alum, Mikhail, what was the most important thing that you learned at AU Arts? OK, thanks for that question. Um, I would say using the being um, getting gaining some experience in producing some some exhibitions and like getting groups of artists together to um, show work was a very good experience for me and it it allowed me to um, go come out of school with a bit of um, knowledge of how to put something put an event on and get people organized and promote certain things. And that was really helpful um, when I was in school. Um, it kind of builds your confidence a bit. And yeah, I also was a, a participant in the exchange program, and that was really a great experience. I spent some time in England um, and I was able to travel a bit in Europe during that time, and it just really broadened my view on what art is, and I was able to go to a lot of museums and see some art that way as well. So I would I would recommend that experience to other students. Thanks for the question. OK, uh, next question. How did you learn how to install the murals, the materials to use in your techniques? Was it trial and error? Or was it shared knowledge through the art community? Um, well, that's a good question as well because it can be quite daunting and there is a lot of uh, tricks and tip like process involved in that. Um, I did have uh, some experience uh, part time jobs as a commercial house painter, stuff like that, that gave me some some knowledge about um, painting big surfaces. And uh, also m my time in Victoria, um, there was a there was a strong culture like street art culture there. So I did have some previous experience with uh, painting walls in Victoria. 
Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Um, obviously, you know, your first mural to your most current mural is a lot of trial, trial and error, and you you definitely learn so much um, every time you do it. And then through through festivals, like we were saying, um, meeting other artists, um, it's it's really fun to have that mural banter with with other people who've had similar experiences as you or really different experiences as you. Um, so yeah, there is this collective knowledge that that you can access um, through different mural artists. But definitely trial and error is uh, is a good way to learn always with with art, you know. Hey, thank you. Um, next question. Uh, how do you manage working out in the elements, out in the cold and the rain? A lot of your work is outdoors um, when you are completing these outdoor murals. Um, yeah, it's definitely a part of the experience that we we enjoy um, being outside. Um, it can be challenging like it's just it's another factor that you have to um, understand. Sometimes you're painting in a area that has a lot of traffic, so there's going to be people trying to talk to you. And, and there's often there's often a time restraint due to like renting, renting equipment, whether it's a lift or or different tools that that we need to use. So but that's another thing that we kind of enjoy, you know, having having a set time to complete this thing and then it's done. Um, and and just the physical nature of it as well, you know, getting up on a ladder and, you know, you're holding gallons of paint, shaking them up. Um, so that that public doing that process publicly is is really rewarding. Obviously, we have to have some pretty hardy sun hats and and sunscreen uh some sometimes it gets really hot uh, against the wall it's like paint dries instantly um yeah we haven't done too much winter outdoor painting we but we, we we did do that once and um it's challenging staying hydrated and having some uh some good food is uh important as well Thank you. Next question. Was your decision to travel to Mexico related to investigating the long history of Mexican muralism and the social and political messages created by artists like Rivera? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, very much so. And along with the history there with mural painting, there's also a lot of history about print uh, printmakers and, and work artists from Mexico you know who have done that for a number of years so definitely it was it was almost like visiting a mecca of sorts yeah and um it's just very different there like there is such a strong history of muralism um but there's also like tons of contemporary um mural work and there's just art in in the public space in just like a completely different way than we have it here in Canada. And, you know, the street art in Canada, um, I guess specifically Calgary, um, it's kind of a newer thing here and and it, it being introduced so new and, and like it's kind of exploded here. Uh, it, it creates a really different kind of of landscape you know public art landscape within the city so you know we try to not just be in that bubble and and see what how how that exists in other places it it just helps broaden you know the the way we see the work that we do so it, it was really helpful in that way Okay, thank you. Here's another question. Because you use a lot of found objects, is the work then temporary or are you trying to give it permanence? Yeah, those uh, found object installations uh, were, were kind of a temporary or ephemeral thing. Um, the, pr the project in Victoria 
we actually put all of the materials after the exhibition was done we kind of put them all out on the sidewalk in front of the gallery and and people came by and were taking all sorts of stuff and like all of the stuff from the exhibition was gone within a day or so yeah it's a it's a good it was a good lesson in letting go and and that's part of the mural painting world and process is that you know no matter if if how long you spent no matter how long you you think this mural should last or will last it's it's really out of your hands and and that's okay like it's okay that that these walls the, the art on these walls are changing and evolving uh, many people many people have a problem accepting that but it's really just the nature of of murals and mural painting Okay, next question. How do you come to a consensus when you disagree on an aspect of a project or an approach? <laughs> <laughs> um. Things can get heated sometimes, <laughs> but um, we usually, yeah, I mean, it helps that we are p partners in life as well as art collaborators, because we usually ha have oh, to geez. figure it out. <laughs> Otherwise, things won't go smoothly. <laughs> but um, but I mean, it is a bit of a letting go sometimes of your own ego and uh, trusting the other person sometimes, even when you don't think that's the right way to go. Maybe maybe you need to step back and and uh, take another look. Yeah, we're we're pretty fortunate that that we're able to work well together. We often say like, if it didn't work well, we wouldn't do it. So, um, so this this collaborative thing that we we've started, um, we've really just let it evolve as as we each kind of add to it and and are adding our own skills to kind of conglomerate what we do has been really cool, really cool to see. Yeah, like one of us will often take a lead on a project or direct it in a certain way. And and um, that's yeah. And and we both have different skill sets that come into play. Like. I have some knowledge on screen printing and and share that knowledge with Rachel and Rachel has a lot of design like computer design knowledge that she shares with me and we kind of make things work that way it's not all both of us doing everything together all the time we, we delegate tasks and stuff like that okay next question um uh this this uh question is i was wondering if you can speak to how your conceptualization process has changed from your time in school where there may be a lot of emphasis on the gallery context now that you work with spaces that are very influenced by their surrounding. Yeah, um, that is an interesting uh, question. I know that like uh, the start of our collaborative um, process a few years ago um, very much was like arrangement of colors and forms um, and that continued in a different way with the sculptures we were starting to make but it was a similar way of arranging um, pieces like we often before. like not as much anymore sometimes still but um make our designs through paper collage so it, it we did feel that it related to making these assemblage installations um working together you know moving paper around um so it, yeah there there were some similarities but honestly it's it's just been you know working with with whatever space we can. Um, it's often difficult to, to get access to a space where you're able to do those those heavy installation where you know you're painting on the walls, you're you're screwing stuff 
in kind of you know and without like very experimental like not not getting permission for every little move you make um but it's kind of just been it's kind of just developed out of necessity for where where we're able to to show our work um i think we'd both like to revisit that that type of installation again in the future um we just need the space yeah um, we've moved now into designing work more um, digitally, which is a, a step forward for us, but we still try to remain uh, have some sort of like loose framework that it can work within. So. OK, we have another question here. What's coming up next for Nazarimba? Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, we're looking forward to spending some time in the studio. Um, we have an upcoming residency at the Arts Commons um, that we were supposed to do last year, but because of COVID, it got all pushed back. So we're going to be hopefully doing that this spring. Um, and yeah, we really look forward to those times uh, where we can focus in on some studio work because that then influences the 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 mural work that we do. Um, our practice really flows in throughout the year, like we do a lot of work outside in the summertime and then we're able to work on printmaking and sculptures and paintings in the in the winter more. So it's really that flow that really generates new ideas um, and keeps things interesting for us. So yeah, we have this residency coming up and then we have some some outdoor murals planned once the weather um, gets a bit better for us. OK, another questions come in here. What is the biggest challenges um, in transitioning from being a student to becoming a professional artist? That's such a good question. And it's one that we we love to talk about uh, with new new grads. Um, some we've met met through burnt toast, actually. And I mean, it's 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 kind of sho a shocking thing to be newly out of school. Um, because you don't have the space that you you were given in school, you don't have this the studio space. Um, you're you're farther away from your peers. I can only imagine what it what it's like during COVID to be. Um, I don't know. It it can be kind of existential, but yeah, like we say, just joining joining these collectives, joining a, a group studio, a shared studio. Um, those types of things can really put a put a, make make things easier that transition. Yeah, and just trying to make work, even if uh, it's once a week or you know, like trying to do a little bit here and there, it, it all builds up. You know, like um, doing these little shows at you know, even at coffee shops. You know, you, you don't need to worry about like making it big time right away because, you know, art making is like a lifelong process and it's a slow burn sometimes, you know, you you just have to keep kind of working at it and things will come from each op from each um, experience you have new opportunities will come out of that. Um, and you might not even know it at the time, you know, it might happen a few a year later where you made a connection and then you have something come up. So, you know, just trust in yourself as well, you know? That, and like, you know, I'd encourage to do what you like you know don't don't try and do what you think is is happening or whatever and like you know part of what has kept our practice fulfilling for us is is the multidisciplinary aspect of it you know like don't be afraid to try new things don't be afraid to learn new things uh you know in your art practice and incorporate those and you know that helps that helps if 
you know, you eventually want to make your living off of art, um, having having different outlets and different ways to work um, can be really helpful. And also like trying to find a part time job that um, benefits you other than like paying paying the rent is great, but also, you know, finding something that somehow will benefit you in other ways. Yeah, as a resource like, for you. Like, for instance, I uh, after school, after graduating, I got a job printing t-shirts commercially. So then I have access to screen printing equipment and can print my own stuff on after hours. Or um, I work part time at the library. So there's resources there that I can access. Okay, thank you so much for the great answers and thank you audience for the really good questions that came in today.